Welcome to this introductory series into game development in Unreal Engine 4. This series will be a short introduction into some basic functionality in Unreal Engine and provide you some basic information and skills to use as a platform to build on in later tutorials and lessons. In this first episode of the series, we'll be going through how to install Unreal Engine 4. After that, we will be creating our first project. And once all that is done, we will go through some of the very basic functionality to get you acquainted with the software. Okay then, let's get started. Open up a browser of your choice. Search for Unreal Engine. Go to the Unreal Engine homepage. In the top right you'll have a download button. Click on that. You will be presented with a few license options. For our purposes, the free to use, no royalties option will do just fine, so click download now. You'll be prompted with this screen asking you to create an Epic game account. I will let you continue and finish this up since I have already created an account and then we'll continue from there. Okay, now that we have the account created, and the launcher installed. Let's start it up. So this is what the launcher looks like. The part that we're interested in today is the Unreal Engine section here on the left hand side. Once that is selected you'll get these tabs up here in the top available to you. We want to click into library today. Under library you will find three different sections you'll see engine versions, which will show you all the different Unreal Engine 4 versions that are currently installed on your system. You have the My Projects section, which will show you all the different game projects that you have on this local system. The Vault section contains all, if any, assets you have connected to your account currently. You can get assets to your Vault from the Marketplace. There are assets available for you to purchase, and there are assets available for free to download. So let's continue. In the top right, you'll see Install Engine. Click that button. You'll be presented with a license user agreement. I have chosen to accept it earlier, so it doesn't show up for me. After that, you get to choose a install directory. So I'll let you install the software somewhere where you choose and then I'll get back to you once it's done. There. So now we get the options of what kind of a project we want to create. You may or may not have gotten some notifications about uh, the Unreal Engine requiring some prerequisites or authorizations or something of that nature. So you can just accept those and proceed and eventually you'll end up on this screen. So we will be choosing a game today, and then we'll be clicking next. Then we'll get a template option to choose from. What these are, are basically small, tiny projects with a few objects and settings put into them so that you get a certain feel for it. Basically a base platform to work from. So if you would like to make something like a third person game you could choose the third person character template to just have something to quickly start off from. Or if you would rather like to do something like a vehicle game you can choose that. And so th this serves a purpose as something to like base your project on uh, but it doesn't necessarily force you to make a game of that particular genre or category, you can always just change this to, to something else if you have all of the tools available skill-wise to, uh, to do so. So th these are just to help you along, which is very helpful for us today since we will be sort of playing around just learning some basics. So for today's uh, lesson we will choose the first person character template and then we'll click next then we'll get project setting options available to us so to go over these shortly um, this first category here can choose between blueprint and c++ code uh, 
blueprint is a scripting language available in Unreal which allows you to do uh, game logic without having to actually learn the, the programming language uh, C++ to, to uh, execute. Uh, it is very flexible and robust and it's uh, very user friendly. Next to that we have quality which is uh, a setting that uh, you use for if you're going to make a game for a desktop for example or for a mobile game then you might want to tweak the quality depending on the platform that you're going for ray tracing disabled or enabled this is for this is a bit of an advanced setting for higher end graphics cards currently so we will leave this one at disabled this again comes back to what kind of a platform you want to create your game for. We will be choosing desktop console for today. And then there is the last option of with starter content. Starter content is a collection of assets and objects allowing you to more quickly do some very basic things and make them look okay like uh, maybe some, some particle effects and extra textures and uh, things of that nature. Uh, you would pick no start content here if you wanted to keep the file size smaller. Um, for today we will be choosing with starter content. Then you choose a project name and I'll see you inside of the engine. So, welcome into Unreal Engine 4. To start off, we will do some basic cleaning here. I have a pop-up down in the right here saying there are new plugins available. I'll click Dismiss to get rid of that for now. Up in the top right, I will have a introductory tutorial available to me. So we will be clicking that away. If at any point you want to actually see what that tutorial is about, you just have to click the little tutor icon up here and you can resume that at a later point. So, let us start off with everything that's being shown here on the screen. This is sort of an overwhelming amount of information available, but we'll go through it uh, part by part and dissect basically what it is, uh, what its purpose is, um, and then go from there and eventually we will have covered all of it so you should have a basic understanding of everything that's shown. So in the bottom part of the screen we have the content browser. This is where all your assets in this project will be available. This is where you will have things like meshes or textures or sounds or user interface elements everything will be shown down here and this works basically like a file explorer in windows you can even choose to uh, pick a style that's more similar to a file explorer by clicking the button over here In addition to the file system visuals, you also have a breadcrumb location where you can see exactly where you currently are, which folder you're in, and also you can use this to navigate around with. So content for this is the root folder, the highest most folder in the hierarchy available for this particular project. In the top left you can see place actors. This section of the engine represents items that you can place into the world. Uh, everything from simple objects like cones, cylinders, spheres and cubes to more advanced things like lights, starting locations and things of that nature. It is sort of a toolbox of items that you can place to either quickly get something up and running or to make some uh, 
adjustments to how your game wants to work. The huge window in the middle of the screen is the most important part. You can sort of see it as a... You are a camera floating around in the world basically and this is the viewport or the, the, the lens in which you see the world. We will be going into more detail how to move around and use this in a later part. In the top right of the screen we can see the world outliner. The world outliner represents all the objects that are available in the world currently. So uh, everything that you see in the middle of the screen there is an item in this list in the top right. So for example if I was to go up here and click on floor then you can see that a portion of the middle screen here gets a yellow outline basically a highlight saying I have been marked. And for each item in this world there will be a representation over here in some form or shape. So this is where you can look up all of your objects if you, you are having trouble finding something in the world or vice versa if you have something in the world that you want to structure in a certain way and it isn't you can find it here and then arrange it so that it is uh, in a better structure in the world outliner. On the right hand side in the bottom we can see the details panel. The details panel consists of all the properties of a selected object in the world. So if we click around on using left mouse button clicking on different items in the world we can see that properties on the right hand side change. That's because each of these objects have their own set of variables, parameters and properties set that belong to them and this part of the screen displays all of these things. Lastly, in the top of the screen we have a set of functions and settings that are available uh, to configure and manipulate the, the project that we're currently working with. For us, starting out, the most important part is most likely going to be this up here. This is the play button which actually starts the game. There are uh, settings available through this drop down here that belongs to this play button. Uh, things like making you play in a simulated mobile game window or standalone game making you show uh, for uh, how, what the game would look like in full screen if it was completed and distributed or you can try out things like uh, multiplayer client server settings things like that for us today we will not be looking at any of those we will just be looking at the play button as it is so uh, just to get a feel for what that is like we can play uh, a little bit by clicking the play button and you'll see that we get a slightly different perspective in the same world that we were seeing earlier. If we at any point want to stop we can stop playing by clicking the stop button or by pressing escape. You'll see that we have a mouse currently but if we click then it will take over and we no longer have a mouse but we can now control the player with our mouse inside of the game. You can also use your keys W, A, S and D to move around in the game. So this might be a good opportunity for you to play around a little bit, shoot with your gun and get a feeling for what it's like to play and whenever you feel like you're done you can just press the escape key to get out. That will be everything for now. I hope that this was valuable to some of you and help those of you who feel that it's daunting to start learning game development. 
I hope you don't feel discouraged. I will help guide you from the bottom up and you will be competent in Unreal in no time. In the next part of the series we will be going through how objects work in 3D space, how we can manipulate them in different ways, and we will learn how to easily move around in the world ourselves. Until then, keep on learning.